I still, to this day, like if anybody tells me they don't like Nickelback, I'm like, you're a liar. You are yeah. a dirty liar and you are just saying that because you think it's impossible. It's, it's impossible. Like impossible. It. Part of your kind of lyrics, which I really dig, is mm -hmm. your excellent deployment of the word fuck, I think oh. is, <laughs> it adds so much power to certain lyrical moments. I have had some fans message me recently, like, you say fuck too much, and now I'm not I listening no to you doubt. anymore. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I love authenticity in music, and, and that's something that, to me, is so important, especially when it comes to writing my own. Like, I don't want somebody to listen to my music and be like, that's not her. You know, obviously, like, one day I would love to be playing arenas and stadiums. I feel like every artist says that. But as far as, like, there being an end goal, I feel like there really isn't one. You know, I feel like the sky is the limit. Every year, I have the same tradition that I have. I go to Download Festival, which I consider to be the best festival of rock you can go to, and I listen to every single band on the lineup to make sure there are no hidden gems that I might miss. And years later, look at the lineup and think, if I'd only known. And one of them that stood out this year was Taylor Acorn, as there was a brilliant slice of pop punk that emanated through the artist, despite what I tend to listen to these days, which is more of the heavier rock. Went to check out the live set, thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm delighted to have a chance to have a chat with Taylor today. Now, first of all, recalling your live set, mm -hmm. am I right in thinking you said it wasn't just your first gig in the UK? Was it your first time in the UK? That can't be right, was it? It was my first time in the UK, literally ever. And it was my, my I think it was my third festival. Like I had never even played a festival in the US. So that run that we were on, it was like, wow. um, yeah, so that was my third festival I'd ever played. So it was pretty nerve wracking, but it was amazing. I, I want to go back literally every year. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Yeah, and it was a sizable yeah. crowd too. It was on the, the mm -hmm. third uh, stage and it's a, it's a large tent. It must have just looked mm -hmm. like a sea of people. What, was that the, the turnout you were expecting or was it something of a surprise for you? It was definitely a surprise. I, you know, as a newer artist too, and especially coming from a, a different country and so far away, you know, you never really know if people are going to know who you are or are going to be interested in, in listening to your set. And so when I went out there, I was like, in shock. <laughs> I, I don't think I'd ever seen that many people. Um, and it was just really cool that they showed up for me. And um, there were a lot of people singing too, which was really crazy. Um, so it was it was a really awesome experience. I won't lie. <laughs> nice. Well, that's the beauty of the yeah. internet, right? Everyone in the world yeah. can hear your music. You don't have to like mm -hmm. be gigging around the UK for years to get that. Yeah. opportunity and, and have people know your songs. That's very cool. Yeah. Um, how was the experience of not only your first time in the UK, just being your mm -hmm. first time there, but also being for a actual booked gig for your musical performance? Um, it was awesome. I mean, are you talking about like my headlining as well or just download? Oh, I hadn't. Uh, yeah, I guess I thought download was yeah. your only visit. Were you also playing some gigs no. as well around it? Yeah, so I played a headlining show in London as well, and it sold out. And so it's just, I don't know, it, it was just a really cool experience. And honestly, like, for me, I have, that was like, literally my first time ever even being out of the country, aside from like going to Canada. And so just seeing like, the, the culture and how different it is from the US, I just... I honestly, I never wanted to leave. I was like, oh, okay, I could just stay here forever and just tour here forever. I will be happy. <laughs> but it was really cool. And um, I, a moment and memories I will never forget, honestly. Um, so it was, it was really awesome. So one of the things that stood out for me was obviously the music, and that's why I went to see mm -hmm. your set. Now, yeah. I predominantly listen to the heavy, the heavy, heavy rock now, but mm -hmm. my high school years were all in pop punk. And when that mm -hmm. first song I heard was, Psycho, and when it opened up, they had this drum beat, which was instantly like, that sounds like Fallout Boy. And then they had these <laughs> downstroked, palm muted guitars. I'm like, that sounds like the starting line. And then mm -hmm. the chorus kind of hit, and it wasn't just a copy and paste first half of the chorus. The second, there was a vocal variation in the melody. I was just, mm -hmm. I was just in from the off. Um, I then went on a, like a rabbit hole deep dive in your other kind of material, and that seemed mm -hmm. pretty consistent throughout. You can discover new mm -hmm. artists and go, great song, that was their only great song, but not the case. Mm -hmm. I find that your lyrics tend to pack a punch at the crescendo of choruses really 
really well within the story of those. Is that something that you have honed over writing like hundreds and hundreds of songs? Or is that something that you work on with writing partners? How do you mm -hmm. approach your songwriting structures? I, you know, that's honestly such an interesting question because I feel like I really don't have any rhyme or reason. And that's probably like a horrible answer. But I think because it's, I grew up on that music and it's music that I love so much. And so I don't want to say it's like instinctual. Um, but I do think that that's something that I admire so much in music. I love like when the chorus is big and like heavy and hard hitting. And so um, I think I just kind of lean into that more. Um, but yeah, that's really awesome that you like noticed that and you appreciated that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I think I just, every time I write music or write a song, I'm always like the bigger, the better, like big vocals and, and things like that. So I, I um, yeah, I, I think it's just kind of something that happens um, because it's what I love to listen to on my own. So. Well, that's handy. It sounds like you don't have yeah. to like overthink it and potentially get writer's block and rest. You're just looking for what mm -hmm. naturally emanates. And I heard your mm -hmm. most recent single basement. And again, it mm -hmm. has, what I've loved about Psycho in particular is it's a sort of twist of phrase and of concept that kind of flips things on its head. And what mm -hmm. I thought was interesting about Basement, which I wondered if it was designed or a happy accident, is mm -hmm. you could melodically, when you're saying in, I guess Rock Bottom has a basement, is go downwards and be like, it's a sad, mm -hmm. depressing realization. But the melody yeah. goes up and that's the start mm -hmm. of the chorus. It's like, Basement, yeah. it's almost like, is this getting worse? How's it but like it's kind of it <laughs> packs more emotion into it. it yeah. Was that by design or is that just how it came out? That was so we we actually did kind of um, tinker with the idea of it going down, but um, I think that that was like the something that made it so cool to me was um, everybody expects for when you say like rock bottom or like rock bottom has a basement, it's going to go down. Well, I think just because it is such a powerful and has such a powerful meaning and i think to myself um it was important to kind of have that like um kind of like that feeling of like chaos and it being higher and like heavier and hard hitting um because that's how i feel like a lot of the times when you're in that scenario or you're in those situations where you feel like it's not going to get better it, it feels kind of chaotic and crazy and and um almost like you can't handle it and so um i wanted to have it be really big and um kind of have that like oh wait this why is this go you know what i mean it kind of gets you thinking about um like why it's like that and in my brain that's just how i feel whenever i feel especially in that moment when i you know wrote that song i felt so just like ah my life is crazy like why does everything have to be just like blah, 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 like all the time um and so i kind of wanted to have that like perception of that feeling in that song and so that's kind of why we made it so big going into the that chorus. makes sense that does make sense yeah. and in those moments it's it's almost as well sounds half like a crying out about mm -hmm. it but also it's sort of it's stable it's kind of got its own resolve mm -hmm. it's like okay given that's the reality what next mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. What what led to to that that song? Where's this that song coming from? Where's that phrase come from? Because I've never heard that before, and I love that <laughs> that kind of twist on it. Um, so, I, so I I struggle a lot with like depression and anxiety, and I write a lot about that, and it's something that is really important to me to kind of shed light on, especially um, with people who might be going through that and not necessarily knowing how to like go through it, or they feel kind of alone in that, and um. So when it comes, when it came to writing that song, um, I was in the bot, I was in the bottom, I was in the writing room with um, my best friend, Emma, who we brought on for like the last few songs that I've written. And it's just been so fun writing with her. Um, she knows me, all of the ins and outs. I vent to her about literally everything. Um, and then I was with my other co-writer, Dan Swank, who I write with a lot. And um, I told her, I was like, I just feel like, no matter what I do, it just, it like one thing will be really, really great, but then I'm just knocked down off that pedestal. And like, it just, I feel like it can never be better. And she was like, you know, kind of like rock bottom, but like having a basement. <laughs> and I was like, wait, is that cool? And she was like, I, I don't know. And so we just kind of, um, that's amazing, you know, tinkered with that idea of it, you know, feeling like 
you feel like you're at the rock bottom and it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> and that's kind of like finding a basement in that, like, what the heck, how does that even happen? But, um, I don't know. We just, we just kind of went with it. And when we had finished it, we all kind of looked at each other and we're like, this is really cool. Um, and it's kind of a different take on, um, being at like your lowest. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where right. it came from. I, yeah. I'm reminded <laughs> of the, the Homer Simpson me, but he's like, you've hit rock bottom so far <laughs> like it yeah get like worse. it can always get worse and <laughs> and that and that it can but it's kind of you know i i wanted it to have like that little element of like a little bit of hope just you know there's always you can always go up from there but currently i'm here so <laughs> yes. understand the reality first yeah. and then you know where to yeah. go up you mentioned yeah, uh, Dan sure. Swank there. I, I saw that in some of the notes, mm -hmm. and I, I was not yeah. familiar with that name, but when I looked them up, I am familiar with the band that mm -hmm. they uh, were in. And yeah. I like to play this sort of influence bingo game where mm -hmm. I was thinking, listen, listening to your music, All Time Low did occur to me as a band that, that might have uh, been in there. But mm -hmm. I mean, how recently have you been working with him? How did you meet that, that person and start to collaborate with them? So I have known Dan for probably going on like seven years or so now. Um, he actually, before he was in um, All Time Low, he and I, we were, he was in my band. So we had kind of started collaborating earlier on um, when I was back doing country stuff. Um, and then when I had, I was like signed to a publishing company um, where I wrote primarily country music. And so that's kind of the artistry that I was leaning into at the time. Um, but when I left that publishing company, Dan and I continued working together and he's been probably my like core collaborator for the last seven years. Like we've written at this point, probably hundreds of songs together, um, wow. just him and I. And so, um, it wasn't until probably like the last two years that him and I have kind of like started bringing more people into like our circle, but, um, he's like one of my favorite people to collaborate with. He's just so talented lyrically um production wise um sonically i do think he does take a lot of like inf like uh influence from like all time low because that was one of his favorite bands growing up so it's really cool to see him like being able to thrive and and work with them and um but yeah i don't know i think we've just kind of found this perfect balance of like the music that we both love and um lyricism and things like that and so we've we've worked together for a really long time and it's been awesome Max, well, it yeah. clearly is, is working well for you. And other yeah, things thanks. that I heard in there when I was listening was, mine was I think the song was um, Good Enough. I got some Dashboard mm. Confessional vibes. Did you listen to that much? I do, day? yeah. I did a lot. <laughs> yeah, nice. So, there's, I don't yeah. even know how to necessarily describe it. There's something about the balance of downstroked, palm muted guitar mm -hmm. with kind of a clean, more pretty decorative guitar that's, that goes with it and a driving mm -hmm. drum beat behind it. It's like mm -hmm. every once in a while, pop punk has this sort of resurgence. Mm -hmm. And it's because there was a reason why it was massive down in the mm -hmm. early 2000s. It's not because it was mm -hmm. some trend. The music's good. Like, mm -hmm. and it's just fundamentally yeah. good stuff. So it's really, it's really lovely to hear that stuff uh, coming yeah. back. Well, now, you, you mentioned the, the country earlier things, because when I was mm -hmm. doing the deep dive, mm -hmm. I found what I thought was potentially a different artist by the name of Taylor Eck. I was like, oh, <laughs> this happens sometimes on Spotify and yeah. all the songs are together. <laughs> A few years ago, you had a, a legit kind of country sound, which, by mm -hmm. the way, I loved. Oh, I do, well, thank I do you. like the country. Thank and you. what I'm fascinated to know about is the vocal delivery is slightly different now to what it was then. It, I guess mm -hmm. it goes in country, there's a bit more of a twang allowed. Um, mm -hmm. I've been in metal bands and ska bands and hip hop bands, and my performance will differ slightly according to style. Mm -hmm. How has the country twang come out versus what you're doing now and how have you balanced that over the years as you've changed your your musical direction i won't lie i, I do think that the country twang was a little bit forced <laughs> i think um when i had originally forced, just positioned well, according positioned. to what the song needed right but, yeah for sure um and you know when i had decided you know i want to be an artist i 
definitely wanted to lean more into the rock pop punk side of things because that's obviously the music that I grew up on it's the music that I listen to and I've listened to you know since I was a little kid and I won't lie I I didn't this is like horrible to say and I'm like so sorry if like any country fans hear this but um I honestly didn't really listen to much country growing up I mean we would listen to like early 90s country like Garth Brooks and you know artists like that and um but that was really it. Like I, I don't listen to country music. Um, and so when I started making music, I think that that was really just the avenue that made the most sense as far as like getting a foot in the door and kind of, um, you know, getting a start as an, an artist. It's, it's really, I don't want to say it's easier, but um, it definitely is. I mean, you can build a really great fan base around country music um, because they are so like die hard for it. Um, but I think, yeah, like you said, it was just kind of one of those things where I, I think I was in the mindset, this is what I believe country music to sound like. And so that's how I would interpret my vocals. <laughs> and so totally makes sense. it's been kind of weird because now even in, in my music that I've been making, I do hear some people and I don't know if it's just because they were fans of, of me when I was making the country music, but they still say that they can hear like a bit of that country twang. And I don't know if it's there just my tone of voice that I, now. That I could hear. A little in, bit. <laughs> yeah. What was it? The song, I Think I'm In Love, there's mm -hmm. a vocal like trill thing you do before a chorus when like just say you need mm -hmm. me too i'm like that's that harken back to the country that's a very country kind of a, a delivery i thought that was kind of cool yeah and so it's just it's i i like when people say that i still have a little bit of those elements but i'm also like dang it i i don't know how i get rid of that <laughs> I was in I think too it's deep just, for too long <laughs> yeah i think it's just kind of like instinctual now but um i i do ap appreciate it because i feel like it kind of makes my music a little bit different than just like the mm. like generic pop pop punk or pop rock um it just kind of gives me my own little flair and so I've I've kind of leaned into that and appreciated it and yeah it's been cool and I really love that like people love that's so, like I I tend to think that a lot of people gravitate towards I think I'm in love especially during like the live show and stuff so it's it's fun to still have like those country elements but have mm. people that love pop rock and pop punk still appreciate it as it well, is, this is so. it. The, the Venn diagram yeah. of music people enjoy is, is vast. Um, way, back when you were yeah. doing the country stuff, were, were you involved a, a lot of the songwriting side of things as well musically? Because there was a moment in, maybe I'm just reading into this, but the song, mm -hmm. guys like you, there's like a banjo or mandolin part that sounds like <laughs> a lead guitar part you'd have in a pop punk song. Yeah. Like, has that always been something you've kind of been cooking in or? Yeah, so I, I always love being a part of like the production process. I feel like I've, I am very picky. And so um, I, you know, if I hear something that I don't like, I'll be like, no, we need to do this. And like I said, I am so influenced by pop punk music just in general. And so I wanted obviously to have a different flair on like the country side of the music that I was making. And I think, again, that was just like me being like, I love Paramore and I love, you know, these bands that have like kind of cheeky, but like fun, like, a, I don't know. It's kind of like on the edge of like being strictly pop punk. It's like a little bit more, I don't even really know how to describe it, but um, I always like to have like a little bit of that flair in my music, even when I was making country. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really like to have like my hand in the pot as far as like production goes, because I feel like I can, there are things that I hear and I can kind of see in my head of how I want it to be sounding. And um, so I definitely like to uh, take a little bit of charge in that um, as far as my ideas go. But um, yeah, the banjo thing, I, that was definitely like a call on my uh, product, my producer at the time. But um, as far as like the leads and things like that go, I, I have like these little ideas of how I want them to sound. And I think he just nice. kind of threw the banjo in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's country music. You gotta have a yeah, banjo. Got, come on, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't listen to enough to know whether it was a banjo or a mandolin. I was like, I, yeah. I couldn't say, but uh, you not know, fair. I'll have to go back what and the, listen to that song. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of the so when I was listening to pop punk, and this is true mm -hmm. of most genres actually, mm -hmm. there's always people saying like it all sounds the same. And I was mm -hmm. firstly trying to defend pop punk, but like no, it doesn't, because all these bands sound totally different to me. But that's because mm -hmm. you spend time with the music, you notice the mm -hmm. differences. Sure. What would be your kind of take on that and how do you 
I guess because you kind of honor this, the sound of the thing that you love, mm-hmm. but you also probably want to innovate and push it somewhere else and introduce new mm-hmm. ways. How do you balance that sort of sweet spot, as it were? I mean, I, you know, it's, I'm, I'm just so big on like authenticity. And I know, you know, I, I knew going into this, like I am, I was a country artist and I am now moving into a genre that is new and although it's something that I love and I appreciate you're right like I I when I listen to bands like I I can articulate the difference between each band and like the story so far doesn't sound like the main doesn't sound like made a parade doesn't sound you know they all kind of have their yeah. own um you know like nuances and things that they put in their music and um so I you know going into making this music I I obviously wanted to be like hey I listen to this music and I appreciate it and I think I've kind of taken bits and pieces from all of the bands that influence me and um kind of try to make it like a mod podge of what I am and um also as as well as still kind of keeping those elements of my songwriting from before and things like that so I, like I don't really know if I like you also I just might think it's not kind of just all of the, the way that I am. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I just, I kind of, you know, I, I am so influenced by so many artists and I think I'm kind of just like a mod podge of all of them. And so I think it kind of makes, like, I, I think it kind of makes me a little different in that, in that sense. Like, I, I don't think I sound like um, any other female, like, artists right now but i also i don't know i might (laughs) but that's just me like the music that i make and and the the music that i'm inspired by i just you know i really try to lean into that so i don't even know if that answers your question but i it um, does yeah Yeah, it makes sense but what's what's funny about it when i think about it yeah i remember defending pop punk because my brother would be like it all sounds the same Mm. but then you could say the same of metalcore which i adore because i can understand why you say that always Mm -hmm. but equally people say countries are the same but like that's impossible but unless Mm -hmm. you spend time listening to it listening to the various mm-hmm. artists you won't perceive the differences or care about them uh, it's kind of yeah awesome. and i think also too like it's really easy to get like artists like if they sound like somebody i think people get confused by like the influence that they might have like for me i'm so influenced by like early 2000s and like ni- like 90s rock grunge and like that kind of genre of music and I might not sound like that at all but I'm so Mm. influenced by like Counting Crows and like bands like that so I you know I I I feel like I try to at least incorporate some of that and so I think sometimes um people get that confused rather than like them being like oh they sound or they're trying to be like this person or they sound like this person well they might just be influenced by them yes um yeah i get avril lavigne all of the time and as much as i love her i would say that i'm more influenced by other artists um like before i I think it's just instinctual you know yeah i wonder if the avril lavigne thing is a bit of a lazy comparison it's like well you're a female doing pop punk i'm like that's i because i'm here in (laughs) the the starting line and dashboard and Mm -hmm. obviously blink and like all and there's moments Mm -hmm. like there's a guitar part and certified depressant like that sounds like some 41's guitar like and i think that's what makes what you do good no one's going it sounds like this but so mm-hmm. therefore it's dismissible it's, it's like mm-hmm. it's a sort of kaleidoscope of all of them i think that's why mm-hmm. it cuts through and why most oh. so many people will gravitate to your music from that era and, and enjoy it well, thank you thank you <laughs> yeah. um another detail i, I was interested to ask mm-hmm. about and it may be another thing of i don't know we just felt it but the song <laughs> famous last words mm-hmm. i love when a song surprises me structurally because that one it has a chorus and where mm-hmm. the chorus would ordinarily end, it continues essentially the phrase into an acoustic kind of part. How mm-hmm. did that come about? Was that a, did you feel like the, the phrase you wanted to say wasn't going to fit in the in the chorus box and went, let's continue it. Let's see how that goes. Or do you remember that process at all? Um, I am just a sucker for like a good acoustic ending. You know, um, I think that like, songs to me i i also thought that it was really a good like bookend to the chorus um kind of bringing it back to like the very like soft but like you know uh how do i want to word this like making i feel like it's making a statement but it's not like 
so harsh. I feel like we wanted to kind of bring those elements back. I, I, I just love like a good, just acoustic moment. And um, the chorus in itself is so big. Um, and so just like bringing it down back to earth and being like, hey, like, it's just you and me and a guitar. And, and like, this is the kind of like, I don't know, I just I, I think we have elements like that, too. And um, I think I'm in love like that first chorus where it's like, mm. it can be so big, but it's okay to bring it back down and, and make it pretty. And like, um, I think it kind of makes the message heard a little bit better too maybe i don't know um but i i don't know i'm just like i'm a, i'm like always trying to throw an acoustic in there whenever i can so maybe i was just like yeah that's what it needs to be <laughs> but um yeah. yeah i don't know i can relate I, yeah. I, back when i yeah. was i was doing pop punk i wrote a song mm -hmm. and i was just desperate to do this but like the the bridge after the second course was essentially just drums and hand claps and vocals, like the catchiest mm -hmm. part. So the, you, you kind of imagine the crowd doing it. And that dynamic difference in, in a song, I think those beats help it carry. Mm -hmm. and, and it means that if a song starts playing live, you're like, oh, yes, this one, I can't wait for this part. I think mm -hmm. those moments really shine. Uh, in yeah. That way. And it's fun, Very too, cool. because I think that, like, also being able to play that song live, that's definitely a moment where people tend to be, like, I think they kind of, like, grab onto that because it is just like a vocal and acoustic and so it's mm. it's really cool to have that moment live where everybody's like singing and you have like the acoustic in the back and it's just it makes it it's like a really cool moment so i don't know nice oh. another uh part of your kind of lyrics which i really dig but i'm fascinated about the choices behind it is mm -hmm. your excellent deployment of the word fuck i think oh. is <laughs> it adds so much power to certain <laughs> lyrical moments but i have to imagine you've got producers or label people around and go like you know if you didn't have that it'd be so much easier for radio play etc mm -hmm. but if you were to say something like i don't want to mess this up that's mm -hmm. not as punchy as i don't want to fuck this up it means that's actually it's more to your core of being yeah. how do you balance the deployment of that in your in your songs you know, I don't even think I do. <laughs> I just kind of am like, what would I say? Like, that's the thing. Like, I, I'm, I'm definitely like, I, I curse like a sailor sometimes. And so, you know, it, it is, uh, and I, I have had some fans or people that have, you know, messaged me recently have been like, you say fuck too much. And now I'm not I listening no to you doubt. anymore. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, I'm growing up, I'm, I'm getting older, I, if I'm gonna say something, I'm gonna say, you know, like, I don't want to fuck this up. Like, this is, you know, and, and I think I, I like I said, I, I love authenticity in music. And, and that's something that to me is so important, especially when it comes to writing my own, like, I don't want somebody to listen to my music and be like, that's not her. Um, and so I think, you know, for me, especially in a song, like, I think I'm in love, I just thought it was so fun to throw it in there. Like, it's so, I thought like, it's unexpected, but at the same time, it's so real. Like, it's something that somebody mm. would say, you know? Um, and so to leave that in there um, is really important to me and kind of like throw it in there is just like, this is what I would say in a conversation. And if somebody doesn't like it, well, then that's okay. Um, but for me, I just, you know, it's real. And um, that's kind of why I, I threw it in there. I, for my music leading into the new year has definitely kind of dialed back the fucks <laughs> because God bless my mom is like, can you please not say that as much? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can do it. Mothers have you, real but... hold over us. They do. You know, they do. I'm like, yeah, uh, what are you going to think about this? But um, she, yeah, um, she's she's liked all of the songs so far, um, aside from the cursing. And so I'm like, <laughs> I will dial it back a little bit. But I just, you know, it is, it's real and it's me and it's something that I would say. And um, I'm not going to put anything in my music that I wouldn't say. So, um, yeah, I just thought that it was, it was just a fun little, like, additive and it's fun because i think people i feel like it, it like kind of gives them like that like oh okay i can cuss when i'm singing or like i imagine know, so. live the audience really goes for those oh, moments they love it it's so fun it's so fun yeah. every time um and there's a song that we had just put out uh recently in my last um like my last ep that i just released in um in, in the song everything sucks um there's a part where it's like 
everything sucks, everything's fucked. And that's like a moment where everybody, like I'll just like point to the crowd and they'll be like, sucks, uh, fucked. And it's like, <laughs> it's just fun, you know, it's fun. Yeah. And I don't think, I think, I mean, at the end of the day, they're just words and it's just- Could not you agree know? more. I, I go along just with words. Billy Conley's mindset. There's no such thing as bad language, just bad use of good yeah. language. Yeah. And I could also see how if you were to use a lesser impactful word, you're kind of window dressing the emotion a little bit. Yeah. I, see I mean, I couldn't imagine it being like, everything sucks, everything's bad. Like that just doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't hit right. Yeah. It doesn't hit oh, the same. Oh, shucks. Yeah, no, sh yeah, you know what I mean? It just, it just doesn't hit the same. And so um, for the people who have, you know, had the appreciation for it has been really nice. Um, but, you know, there are those occasional that are like, I don't want to listen to you because you cuss too much. And I'm like, well, sure. you know, I can imagine you can't. Certain swathes of the USA, they might have that opinion. Yeah. Strength. I'm, you know, I'm an adult. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, I like, cuss, I cuss. It yeah, is what it yeah. is. I'm similar. Like, I, I, I make videos, put them on YouTube. And every time they're mm -hmm. like, is this made for children? I'm like, no, it's not. Not really. It's, it's, <laughs> they're, not, they're not for this. You know. Um, now, we've, I've enjoyed chatting about the nostalgic side of things. Yeah. Who are you listening to in the current musical landscape that you're like every on every day you're spending oh, gosh that. um it kind of is like all over the place um i actually saw a band that i love this past week um the band in this moment i am like yes. so i just for years i mean i saw them it was probably 10 years ago but I've, I've listened to them pretty consistently now for a while and i mean i just i like love maria brink so much i think she's so badass i think she's so cool i cried during the show this last show that i saw because i was like oh, she's just everything that like i like want to embody as an artist obviously not the same you know obviously have differences but um she's just so cool um and then um, Charlotte Sands, I really love her. I think she's so dope. And it's just kind of cool because we're both, you know, I think coming up in the pop punk, pop rock space and just to be able to appreciate other women. And, and um, I just, I love that, you know, I love when other women are making music and um, especially music that's so powerful too. Um, I love her. I mean, Cassidy Pope has made her resurgence. And so I'm like, hell yeah, she's back. I've been listening to her a lot. Um, and then like, as bands go, like Palais Royale, I saw them at download. Um, I wanted to see them, summer. but they clashed with something else and I didn't, you know, I didn't in the end. I miss and out. And I, I had heard of them, but I had never really listened to them. And I'm really happy that like my first time listening to them and seeing them was at download because their live wow. show is just so cool. So Damn. I really like <laughs> dove into them. I'm, it was really cool. I really dove into yeah. them after They've seeing them. They've got a really clean production sound as well. Like their, their recordings are amazing. Yeah. And they're just so cool. Like their whole um, persona kind of takes on that like early, like 70s, like rock and roll era. I'm like trying to think of the band that um, they remind me of maybe like, Mm, like I don't even know I can't even I want to say like Def Leppard or something like that but not even like it's they're just re really cool they kind of embody that like like OG like just rock, rock and, and roll, roll. Yeah. yeah um and they're really cool um geez I mean I listen to I'm such a sucker for like the OG bands like I still listen to Goo Goo Dolls like every day I listen to like Matchbox 20 Counting Crows like I love like that early like 90s rock um mm -hmm. you know sometimes I find myself listening to like Stained you know just weird oh, like yeah. random oh, Stains yeah and they just came <laughs> out with it yes uh, Puddle of Mud but um Stained just came out with a song actually I think it was like a few months ago but it is I don't know if you've listened to it but like the riffs in that song I'm like Oh, okay. And Aaron Lewis is like screaming a little bit. I was like, this is really cool. So I was going to say your song Coma reminded me a little bit of Nickelback, actually, who I love. <laughs> Nickelback are amazing. I do for real. And they really also funny. have songs that slap like, ah, oh, what's the I mean, Burn It to the Ground is a song. Burn It you, to you the wouldn't Ground. Jeez. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, animals. I, I still, to this day, like if anybody tells me they don't like Nickelback, I'm like, you're a liar. You are yeah. a dirty liar. And you are just saying that because you think it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Like it. And also too, like um, I was having a conversation with somebody um, not too long ago and they were talking about like the most like underrated bands. And I said Nickelback, because if you think about it, they're a band mm. that probably shouldn't have worked, but every single song that they've put out has been like a radio hit or a hit in some way or another. And people just decided one day that they didn't want to like them. And I'm like, whatever, you guys are lying and you're probably in your closet listening to them right now. But yes, 100%. you know, it is what it is. But I, I'm such a sucker for like that early, like rock, like um, Three Days Grace and Breaking mm. Benjamin and uh there's a what a crossfade. I used to listen to them a lot. I don't All know the, them actually. I you should that. listen to them. Um, and then there was a song. What is that song? Uh, gosh, I I just I played it for one of my shows. Um, God, and I can't. It's it's not coming to me all of a sudden well, as a but, cover um, or it was a. I mean, it was just a song. I like chose to play it during my. Um, not the preset. My, yeah, like the preset. Right. And I now all of a sudden I'm going blank, but I'll probably think of it It'll come back later to on and I'll be like, oh, yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm such a sucker for like that early, like, I guess they would call it like dad rock now, but I don't, I don't oh, consider I it that. Yeah. I don't consider it that. It's so good. <laughs> it's still alive today. <laughs> so, in this what's... moment, are, are fantastic as well. They, they also yeah. have just great songs. They're indisputably so good. And mm -hmm. the live show is quite, it's quite a theatrical thing. At times it, it can is. be a bit much, I think. But like some of the, oh, there was a song of theirs there. I think it was some of those, give me a little heaven, give me a little hell. I looped that song for, mm -hmm. I think, two days straight when I first heard it. Oh my it. gosh. I, they have, I mean, I like when their Black Widow album came out, um, I was just so inspired by her. I remember going and seeing them play live. And just like you said, like it's so theatrical and, this time it was it was so different and it's really cool to see an artist from like like them coming up and now she has like dancers and it's like so like fire and all this stuff i'm like mm. dang i want that one day <laughs> well there's but there's my, really cool. my closing question i suppose is what do you have a, a direction you're hoping to end in do you have bucket list items you're hoping to tick off in the future or is it very much a see where it goes just uh, do do what you can enjoy the moments you know, I, for so long, I thought my career was just overdone. Um, and I almost quit there for a while. Um, it's probably like right before I decided to really delve into like the pop punk space. And um, so right now, I'm kind of just like, you know, every moment that I am getting to experience and every show that I get to play, and especially like going and playing download and like going to play like those festivals in Europe and stuff. I, I, you know, I got home and I was like, wow, that's crazy. And if this is the only thing that I get to do for my career, I can hang my hat on that. And I'm really proud, but you know, I, I just kind of take it one day at a time and just try to appreciate it as like the ride continues. And, um, you know, obviously like one day I would love to be playing arenas and stadiums. I feel like every artist says that, but as far as like there being an end goal, I feel like there really isn't one, you know, I feel like the sky is the limit. And um, I, you know, I'm just trying to have appreciation for where I'm at right now. And, you know, as the as the things come and the opportunities come, like I get to go back into the UK and in the summertime and do like slam dunk and stuff, which is something that I would have, you know, you would have asked me four years ago, like, would you be be doing any of this? I would be like, no, I'm doing real estate, <laughs> like, you know, so it's just, it's, it's just Slam one Dunk of those is things. such a perfect place for your style of music as well. I'm, I'm so excited to play that. I've wanted to, like, I've, I've watched it literally on YouTube for years. Like I watched that and like Reading and Leeds and like Rock Am Ring and Rock Am Park and like all those things. And, um, I can feel them coming, which is really mm. cool and really crazy. But at the same time, I'm like. I don't want this to be like my end goal or like have just this be my goal because I have so many, you know? Um, so it's one day at a time, taking it slow, appreciating the ride as it comes. And yeah, that's kind well, of sounds wise. And right soon now. you've got yeah. a, a headline tour of North America and Australia, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. Which is another thing I'm like, what? <laughs> 
it's just Things crazy are going pretty well think, if you're headlining yeah. a tour across the states like that's no that's no joke yeah it's it's really cool um in a, a just again like something i would have never even imagined i would be doing so i'm just just taking it one day at a time sometimes i feel like it's not even real like right now i'm like at home just chilling i decorated for christmas and i'm just like oh, i'm gonna be going to australia in a couple months that's wild so <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just crazy it's really crazy but and in terms of releases so basement came out a, a week ago at the time mm -hmm. of this conversation yeah. um, is that leading up to an ep or album or is it just a, a single release on its own um so right now i am i'm i'm working towards um an album uh i'm kind of like in that i think basement was kind of like the end of that era and now we're kind of into a new one um i love basement though so it hell it might end up on an album i don't know but um i just <laughs> it was just one of those songs where i've i felt so connected to it and i wanted it to come out and so i'm just I'm really happy, you know, that I, I got the opportunity to do that. And then this new music that's coming is, it's cool. It's really cool. So I'm, I'm really excited for like the new year and being able to do that. So. Great. Well, we're excited to hear it. I'm sure I speak on all behalf of those that enjoy your stuff. Thank you very much well, for your time you. and the conversation today. Thank Best of luck so with the tours coming up and the future music. Can't wait to hear it. Thank you so much for having me, Steve. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Taylor Acorn as much as I did. Do take a moment to check out her music on your favorite streaming platforms, wherever it is that you consume that. It is really good stuff. And if you want to continue the conversation with me and want to chat about this interview or recommend other artists you think I should check out and interview in future, there is a Discord server. It's totally free to join. The link is in the description. And perhaps I'll chat to you there very soon.